Thank you for that lovely introduction. So I'm going to, as I always like to do, try and make this as interactive as possible. So if you could all please go to this link, so www.zthings.com slash Dilraj, there'll be a few polls you can participate in. So I've been asked to talk about telemedicine and whether it's intrusive or supportive today. Uh, and I think this is a really exciting topic for me because it combines those different worlds. I've always been interested in shared decision making from an academic perspective uh, and digital health from more of a kind of healthcare implementation perspective. So my job today, I think, in the next 10 minutes is to try and convince you that the only absolute exclusion criterion for telemedicine is the need to physically examine the patient and red flag symptoms. So just keep that in your mind as we go through it. Going straight back to the very basics of evidence-based medicine, we know that it comprises the best available evidence from all the research, our clinical experience, our judgment as clinicians, and then the patient value set and trying to incorporate that into a process of shared decision-making. What I'd like to do as our first polls is to consider how does telehealth or digital health more broadly influence these? Does it support them? Does it disrupt them? So let's consider research evidence first, if you'd like to answer the polls. So far, what I was anticipating. Okay, interesting to see. So largely speaking, I would have anticipated it being on the more supportive side. Obviously, I might be biased given the, the background that I have and what I've been doing in my career to date. However, I feel that um, in terms of contextualizing guidelines or presenting to us relevant evidence as clinicians at a point at which we could actually use that within a consultation, uh, I would have expected it's, it's potentially supportive. It may be that the implementation is not always there to, to get there yet, but um, that's what I was thinking on that one. How about the clinical judgment? Does it give, does telehealth or digital health more, more largely support us or inhibit us in terms of our clinical judgment? A lot more even there you can see. So I think um, in terms of what could be supportive in the context of clinical judgment is to in terms of building an individualized risk profile for a given patient, leveraging tools uh, like questionnaires or validated, um, validated uh, patient reported outcome measures or different ways of quantifying that profile of the individual in front of you, it can be quite helpful to, to be able to do that with the technological tools that are alongside. Sometimes we miss out on doing those, uh, doing those calculations because those tools aren't readily available in our, in our armory in front of us. But definitely, whoever's saying kind of either side of those coins, uh, whatever questions come up, they'd be interesting to come back to. And then patient values, the core of our, of our topic for today. What do we think about that? Does digital health support it or does it uh, inhibit it? Again, a relatively balanced one. And I think this is one where we might think that perhaps privacy wise or in terms of patients being at home in their own environment, perhaps it could be intrusive. And I think it's an interesting one to explore together. So with that in mind, I want to ask you very specifically now, what problems or barriers do we feel telemedicine creates for shared decision making? And I'm conscious that some of these may take a little bit of time, so I may have to move, move forward relatively quickly. Typically, when you go through the um, when you go through the various research papers on it, these are the kind of things that you'll you'll see. Whether it's from a patient perspective that access is kind of at variable times, as privacy concerns, you can have potentially delays to care if if other things get in the way. Um, issues around data quality as well as privacy, uh, technical issues. Obviously, we talked about examination a little bit. Um, but this key thing around relationships, I think, is quite important. Besides the kind of systemic issues that we may face. So largely speaking, I'd say in the context of trying to come to a shared decision that incorporates patient values, a lot of the things that we might face as clinicians as a barrier is that, that ability to build rapport. Um, and that's something that 
there's many barriers to that. I think particularly continuity of care has been one in recent times. Uh, it's not always it's not always the case that you get to see the same patient every time that they come in. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll move on in terms of the benefits to see how, how, what other opportunities there may be presented to us in telemedicine that perhaps um, generate some opportunities in that regard. So that's what I'm going to consider now. What kind of opportunities uh, does or benefits does telemedicine create for sh a shared decision making process? So typically when you're going through the kind of research, the kind of things that you'll see as potential benefits or enablers are the patients are saving costs in terms of uh, actually travel or even in some in private medical models, uh, some, some of those appointments are cheaper um, access. So geographically or financially, um, the opportunity for prevention is, is massive. Um, and I think that's probably from my perspective, one of the biggest opportunities we have in this space. Um, obviously, things like convenience and as uh, as has been proven the case by uh, by the last year's events that reduced infection risk uh, from a provider perspective. Obviously, we're thinking about things like increased capacity, larger data sets from a population health perspective uh, and also creating a better service. I think something as clinicians we may not have expected is the ability to work from home, but that's now possible. And I think with uh, with those digital solutions in place, actually the education opportunities to learn during practice as a trainee. I think that's incredibly powerful and something that we'll start to see more of over the coming years. But if I had to hone in on, on one key benefit or enabler that telemedicine does offer us, I think it's with respect to individual lifestyle and behavior. I think when you have a telemedical consultation as opposed to a one-to-one -one physical consultation in a clinic room, the patient is in their environment. And so you, you're in a position where you get unique insights into the setting in which their disease or their health behaviors occur um, and that that's a really unique opportunity that wasn't afforded to us in previous times uh, things like white coat hypertension where the blood pressure of a patient would rise simply because they're in the doctor's office need not be the case that's something i've seen in my uh, telehealth program i ran at bart's hospital um, and similarly you have opportunities where a lot of the typical barriers in terms of telehealth implementation that are talked of are things like uh, age Perhaps elderly patients are, are less able to deal with telehealth. However, in the experience I've had in running telehealth programs, um, actually there were some patients who felt discriminated against for not having been offered uh, the access or opportunity to, to use telehealth due, due to their age. Uh, similarly, language is, is anticipated as being one. But then you often have a family member uh, or someone translate for you anyway. So that doesn't really present any differences. What really those situations enabled us to do was to include family members in the telehealth calls uh, to either act as kind of that translational barrier or to widen the, um, the support network around the individual patient, um, which again is more con context for their lifestyle, their behavior, their determinants of disease in their day-to-day -day life. And I think that although we may have some, com there may be some compromise that we have to accept in terms of rapport, and actually not being able to physically see a patient and what that what that builds for us actually the opportunities to understand patients not only in the call in terms of the in being in their own home environment but to gather bits of information that wouldn't normally be available to you symptom diaries between appointments uh, blood glucose measurements for diabetic patients um, questionnaires whether it's pre or post intervention to ascertain what the patient reported outcomes and expectations are that's so much more context and fruitful for us to, to be able to not only uh, make better clinical decisions, but actually support patients on a journey of self-empowerment as well. So last question and last poll. I had 10 minutes to do this, but are you with me that the only absolute exclusion criterion for telemedicine is the need to physically examine the patient and red flag symptoms? Looks like next time I'll have to ask for 20 minutes. Um, but I th definitely think this is one to discuss. And I look forward to questions on this. Thanks for participating and thank you for listening.